Hey, let's see what it takes to make this snake drive itself. Watch this. I press A. See if you can figure out what algorithm it's using to do the self-driving. It's really simple. If I hold down the shift key, it goes three times as fast. Kind of fun to watch. And it goes pretty far. You might notice that, let me slow it down and let you watch it. When the new food appears, the snake moves towards it, first on X, then on Y, then on Z. That's the approach. And if at any point it's unable to move because its own body is in the way, then it considers all the allowable moves at that point and randomly chooses one. And that usually gets it out of the bind so that it can continue. All right, let's make the code changes. First, we're going to add, we're going to add a variable here, auto driving. That tells us whether we're in the auto driving mode. Then let's make all the changes in draw and look at them. Okay, well, the first thing we see here is we're testing this auto-driving flag. And if it's true, then we call this new function that we'll encounter in a bit, auto set direction. So this sets the direction as you would as the player using the arrow keys and WS. Then we have to compute the time of the next move, and that's... Um, that's different if you're self-driving. So if you're self-driving, we have one constant for that. I think it's 100 milliseconds by default. And then if you're, um, if the player is driving, then it's, I believe, 1,000 milliseconds per move. And then that's affected by whether the shift key is down. If the shift key is down, then we speed things up by the speed up factor. OK, and that's the changes to draw. Now we have some changes to the key pressed function. And here they are. Well, this is where you activate the self-driving mode. If you press the A key, then it toggles. So take a look at this. This is, uh, a lot of programmers won't use this technique here. And in fact, I had to turn off a warning in IntelliJ IDEA because I'm, what I'm doing looks like a common mistake that people make, which is to use the assignment operator instead of the equality operator inside an if. But this is exactly what I intend to do. This expression here negates auto driving. So if auto driving was on, it turns it off. And then it stores the result in auto driving. So the effect of this is toggling auto driving, changing its state from on to off or from off to on. The result of that assignment is the current value of auto driving. And I want to know if we are auto driving. And if we are, then we set the next move time to now. This way, when you press the A key, the snake will immediately start moving. Okay, these, the brown here just means that these lines have been indented differently, but they're the same. So this is the change in key pressed. Next. There's a change in move snake, a couple changes. All right, when you move the snake, now we will act, we'll do something if we're auto driving or what we checked before, that we have a direction set. And we've renamed a function. It used to be called new position would leave arena. We're now calling it collides because it not only checks whether the position would leave the arena, but it checks to see whether the, the head of the snake would collide with another part of its body. Next, 
here is here are three functions. So we're going to look at them all, um, starting with collides. So let me put those in. We'll jump to collides here. Okay. So this is this is renamed, but it also has a new part. This collides with self. Let me at this point make that take the full screen. And collides with self works by asking whether any segment is at the position we're considering. Any segment of the snake. And then we say return collides with self or not in bounds. So these are the two conditions that uh, either one of which will make us say that we have a collision. Okay, auto set direction. This is, this is most of the self-driving part right here. And let's um, talk about how this works. All right, we, segments is the array with the segments of the snake. We've pulled out the first one and we're calling it head. So this is a P5 vector. Then we know where the food is. That's also a P5 vector. If we subtract the head from the food, then we get a new vector which is pointing to the food. We need to know which way to go. So this is a new vector that points to the food. Then, because we want to use it as an array, we call the array uh, method on that vector. And now we have an array. So this is an array of three elements. Um, how far and in, in which direction on x and y and z to go to get to the food. Then we create this new dir variable. And then we... Um, Remember I mentioned first we travel on X and then Y and then Z, but if we encounter uh, our tail, then we have to randomly choose among all valid moves at that point. So what this does is given the current position, give us all the valid move directions. Let's consider this section. We are setting up a loop to consider each of the axes in turn, X, Y, and Z. So i takes on the value 0, 1, and 2. We have our two food axis distances. And here we're going to pull out the distance on this first axis. So let's say that uh, it's the first time through. i equals 0. And now we're pulling out the distance on x. So, um, And this could be a positive or a negative number. Then we create an array of numbers here that we're going to create a vector from. And then we, we really don't care about the distance. We just need to know the direction at this point. So dividing this number by the absolute value of itself gives a 0, negative 1, or a 1. So for example, if this d is minus 5, and you divide by 5, you get a minus 1. If this is positive 5 and you divide by 5, you get a 1. So that's a way of getting either a 0, a negative 1, or a 1, which is exactly the kind of thing we need for our direction value. Uh, oh, so we get, we get that number and then we store it in the right place in this array here. So first time through, we're, we're trying to use x, so um, we're putting it in here, the minus 1, 0, or 1. Then we create a vector, call that candidate direction. Then we search valid directions to see if it contains this candidate direction. Um, another way to say that is, is this candidate direction that we've made an allowable one? We don't want it to go outside the boundaries or to contact the body of the snake. If it is OK, then we use it, and then we break. And that breaks out of this loop. And then. Um, we check to see if we if we found one. If we if we if we never set neuter and break out, then we have to take a special action. But if we do do it, then we set the direction to that neuter. If we didn't get one, then here's where we where we just check and make sure there are valid directions that we could go, and then we randomly choose one and set direction to that. Let's look at valid move directions. This produces an array of all the valid directions. 
Directions can be either minus 1 or 1 on the x, y, or z axis. So these two loops give us minus 1 and 1 for all three axes. Here we start out with zeros, and then we're going to fill in one of these spots. So first time through the loop, the axis is 0, n is minus 1, so we're putting a minus 1 right here to represent a move to the left. Then we create a vector from the Dura array and call it candidate Dura, candidate direction. And then we find the position resulting from adding the head to the candidate direction multiplied by the cell width. In other words, where you would go if you, if you went that direction. That's the candidate position. Then we want to know if the, the candidate position is, is good. Does it collide with anything? And if it doesn't collide with anything, then we push that candidate direction into our array of valid directions. And at the end of all that, we return valid durs. So if we're in the center, what are the valid directions? Left and right on each of x, y, and z, except for uh, at, when it starts, there are two segments to the left of the head. So it, you wouldn't get a valid direction for minus 1, 0, 0. But you'd get the other 5. OK, I'll leave you with another look at the self-driving and talk about future plans. One would be, when it gets really busy in here, there probably is a better path than the one that the snake is kind of feeling around for. So possibly by using some computer science algorithms and data structures like breadth first search, we'll pre-compute the path, the best possible path, and then execute it. So that may or may not happen. We'll see. But this is where we are for now. And I'll see you next time.